and it's lights out and away we go. Decent start from Charles Leclerc and he gets ahead then of Max Verstappen with Sergio. Get ready. Green, 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 green. Oh, green. Waste no time, drops the hammer and just dumps Newgarden and look at Pelot fighting for position. What does Newgarden do here in the break zone? Rosenquist trying to decide which way to go. Almost three wide from Alexander Rossi. Two by two through turn one. So Hello F1 and IndyCar fans, welcome to Formula Pun Racer. Today is April 21st, 2022. Before I begin my reviews on the Australian Grand Prix and the Long Beach Grand Prix, I'd like to say happy birthday to my little sister Amy. Happy birthday Amy, as well as Her Majesty the Queen of England, who shares a birthday with my sister, 60 years apart from each other. So, happy birthday Your Majesty, with all due respect from the US of A, I hope you have a great day today. Oh, and speaking of the British royal family, if you're wondering how did the Rome E Prix doubleheader go, well, the big British cat, Jaguar, driven by Mitch Evans, won both rounds in Rome, Italy, so congrats to Jaguar for winning it for Mother England. <laughs> Just what the cat dragged in. But as you can imagine, though, unfortunately, despite this back-to-back -back finish by Mitch Evans and Jaguar, the Constructors team is still 5th in points, with Mercedes still leading the Constructors title. Jaguar is 21 points behind. So despite the fact that Mitch and Jaguar are nowhere near close to being on the top of their drivers or Constructors points this time, in Rome, Italy, the big British cat got the last meow. For the race at Albert Park in Melbourne, Australia, the Australian Grand Prix, Unfortunately for Aston Martin, it was a disaster before it even started, and v Sebastian Vettel's first race for the season after finally recovering from COVID, taking over from Nico Hulkenberg, it was unfortunate that in practice, his car just quit on him, but for his Canadian teammate, Lance Stroll, he did something really boneheaded. He collected himself into um, his fellow Canadian, Nicholas Latifi's Williams, causing major damage to both cars which will undoubtedly be uh, quite embarrassing for both those two. And you can imagine a lot of ill will must have been born between these two Canadians. A Canadian civil war, in fact, probably going at each other just like this. I caused the revolution. You betray the law. Law. God, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist using that meme to represent this unfortunate accident. Both, can <laughs> Both Canadians were okay, okay. No doubt about that, but... Oh, this is going to be quite embarrassing, especially seeing Canadians not giving their best impression in F1. If you ask me, former IndyCar champion of Canada, Paul Tracy, he ought to dust his helmet off out of retirement and replace Stroll. I'm sure he could run a million times faster than Stroll any day of the week despite his aggressiveness, eh? <laughs> but then so too could Eddie Irvine, Derek Daly, and Damon Hill. I say, get your helmets dusted off, get it, convince Lawrence Stroll to uh, replace Lance in the Aston Martin seat, and with some luck of the Irish and fellow Britishness, you guys could do better. Yes, Derek. Damon and Eddie, that would be wonderful. But hey, it's all a pipe dream. But now to get on with the race itself. Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc of Monaco started on pole with Max Verstappen of Red Bull from the Netherlands starting second. With the race underway cleanly for the young Monegasque, his Spanish teammate Carlos Sainz Jr. started a dismal ninth after a hard qualifying session. Unfortunately, in his attempts to make up lost ground and time, Going into uh, one of the chicanes on lap two around one of the Alfa Romeos, he lost it getting into the grass, spun around, crossed the track, stuck in the gravel trap. So this Spanish prancing horse's day was glued. <laughs> but there was more bad luck for Aston Martin on lap 24 when Sebastian Vettel lost control coming out of turn four and went head on into the wall. Sebastian was okay, but his car took on severe damage just like Lance Stroll did in practice earlier, so this is going to be very expensive for Aston Martin indeed. The second retirement of the race, and Seb was not happy about it at all. Game over. It's highly unusual. Ow! He's dropped it coming off the curb. Naturally, because of Sebastian Vettel's crash, the yellow flag came out and the safety car was deployed. 
During this caution period, through a slight miscommunication, Mick Schumacher almost ran into the back of Yuki Tsunoda's Alpha Tori, shown here, and it was quite a scare for the German indeed. Holy cow, that was close. Yeah, understood. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa is correct. Good save, Mick Schumacher. <sighs> with Sebastian Vettel painfully crashed out, Aston Martin's only hope lie with Lance Stroll, but unfortunately, he finished 12th in the race. And that's amazing because this is the third race in a row that the team at best has finished 12th. In Bahrain and Australia, Lance Stroll finished 12th at best for the team. In the second race in Saudi Arabia, Nico Hulkenberg, who was replacing Sebastian Vettel after he tested positive for COVID-19, finished 12th then. This means that the green team from Britain is the only team that has yet to score so much as one point this whole year. For us Aston Martin fans, very disappointing and quite upsetting indeed. What a shame. Boo! 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 Yes, Mrs. Marjorie Mason, I couldn't have said it better myself. Boo to Aston Martin, not doing a great job. And seeing how frustrating it is for us Aston Martin fans hoping for better from them. <sighs> Gets my blood boiling all right. Anything from the trolley, dears? Oh, well, thank you, Mrs. Marjorie Mason. I'll take something from the trolley. I'll take this, thank you very much. <sighs> that might be enough to steady my nerves. Bless your heart, Marjorie Mason. For those who don't know, that trolley lady was also that ancient booer, Marjorie Mason, who passed away in 2014 at the age of 100. But, boy, what a fulfilling life this English lady had. Point is, doing it all for Britain. But with the San Marino Grand Prix happening this Sunday on April 24th, here's a hoping that Aston Martin can turn their luck around. But as for the th um, prospect of them winning a race, let alone the championship this year, <laughs> I say we have a better chance at seeing Al Pacino going ice skating with Jason Alexander. Oof, what a bozo. <laughs> okay, I admit that was a little silly, but I couldn't resist. It's unfortunate that Lance Stroll's 12th place um, was made worse by the fact that he endured a five-second penalty because when the race restarted after Vettel's crash, he did a unsportsmanlike thing in terms of weaving in a bad way in front of um, Valtteri Bottas' Alfa Romeo at the restart. Not a good move. Well, Charles Leclerc was still leading at this point, but by lap 39, the man closest to him, Max Verstappen in his Red Bull, was only five seconds behind when the engine in his Red Bull let go, leaving the Flying Dutchman very disappointed and hitting rock bottom. This is his second retirement out of three races, and the only race he's finished, he's won, which was the second race in Saudi Arabia. So Max Verstappen and Red Bull are going to need a miracle now if they're to get back into the driver's and constructor's contention for the win. As a result, Charles Leclerc led every lap of the race, set the fastest lap, and as well, most importantly, won the race for the prancing horse. Ferrari and Charles Leclerc continue to stretch their lead in both the Drivers' and Manufacturers' Championships. And with the next round in San Marino, the Tifosi, aka Ferrari fans, are coming in droves to cheer on Charles Leclerc. This is Charles Leclerc's first Grand Slam, which means he took the pole, led every lap, set the fastest lap, and won the race in Australia. So, can he do it again in San Marino? Second place went to Red Bull driver Sergio Perez of Mexico, and George Russell of Britain for Mercedes finished third. This is his, like, for George Russell, his second podium finish. His first came at last year's rain-canceled uh, spa race at in Belgium, where he finished second by default behind Max Verstappen, who he was driving for Williams. But this is more of his proper um, podium finish for George Russell, and I say, congrats, Giorgio. Lewis Hamilton finished fourth. Now, anything is bound to happen, and we'll see if Aston Martin can pick up a little more pieces in San Marino, but naturally, I have my money on the prancing horse. And let's hope Carlos Sainz can uh, do better with this, because if he lets his horse down again, people will ask him, why the long face? <laughs> Two final notes about the Australian Grand Prix are as follows. First off, Williams driver Alexander Albon of Thailand went 57 out of 58 laps without pitting for the whole race, even though it was still mandatory for every driver to pit at least once during the race, which he ultimately would on the final lap. Thanks to the caution sessions that came out during the race, 
Albon was able to conserve fuel and his tires until the very end where at the last lap he would pit to complete his mandatory objective and miraculously still finish in 10th place the final points paying position which gave Williams one point as well as Alexander Albon one point in the drivers championship so that's how Williams is now one point ahead of Aston Martin and um, that means <laughs> Aston Martin has their work cut out for them to see if they can nab a point or two in the next round in San Marino. Congratulations, Albon. I knew you could do it, and good to see that you've tied down a point for yourself and Williams. <laughs> Final notion about the Australian Grand Prix is that local boy Daniel the Honey Badger Ricardo finished in six in his McLaren Mercedes. Granted, it's not his best finish in Australia, his best finish on home soil came in 2016 and 18 when he finished fourth both times, driving for Red Bull. But now, with the San Marino GP just around the corner, let's see how well you qualify for the race, Daniel. <laughs> From the Australian Grand Prix to the Long Beach Grand Prix, it all began with defending winner Colton Herta of Andretti Autosport on pole with Penske driver Joseph Newgarden starting second. When the green flag flew, it was Colton Herta leading into the first corner, and for the next three laps, that's exactly what he would do. Unfortunately, just like in Australia where Latifi and Stroll gave a bad impression for Canadian drivers, it was no better five laps in the race for Dalton Kellett of AJ Foyt. He unfortunately got up in the marbles and was in the wall to be the first retirement of the race. By lap 30, Colton Herter relinquished the lead to Alex Pillow of Spain for Chip Ganassi as he headed to the pits. On his way to the pits, though, Colton almost went into the wrong box, but he just managed to miss that. Granted, it wasn't a great pit stop, so his chances of getting back to the lead were really far-fetched by then. By lap 34, Scott McLaughlin had a very bizarre scare. Going into the hairpin turn, he bumped his side pod into the wall, miraculous that it wasn't his uh, suspension, be it the front or the rear, that spun him around, so the Penske driver was able to continue on. However, one lap later, Devlin DeFrancesco of Canada of Andretti Autosport was not so lucky, because he slammed into the wall, and then with a wonky car on his way back to the pits at the hairpin, spun it around, uh, game over, a double whammy for Canada, just like in Australia, once again. Uh, Devlin, Dalton, Lance, and Nicholas, I am so sorry you had a bad day. It stinks! Just like your fellow Canadian Daniel Powder would say, I'm sorry you just don't need no carrying on. Good luck in your next races, eh? <laughs> Unfortunately, there was more bad luck to come for Andretti Autosport by lap 56. Colton Herta, who was in second place at this point, five seconds behind leader Joseph Newgarden, was desperately charging aggressively to catch up to him, but unfortunately he pushed a little too hard and ended up crashing in the same spot as Devlin DeFrancesco earlier in the race. <laughs> and no doubt about it, Colton was not happy the slightest bit to be out of it, just like Nashville last year. Game over for the poor Californian. <laughs> By lap 60, there was a more bizarre incident to occur at the Fountain Corner. When Simon Pagano and his Myers Shank car tried to get around Takuma Sato's Dale Coin entry at the turn, which was not ideal because it was too tight, went too far into the inside and ended up being clipped by Sato into the flower garden and spun around. So Simon Pagano, you can imagine it like those flowers. His frustration was growing. <laughs> Nonetheless, a bed of roses for the poor Frenchman, but at least the car will have a nice fragrance to it when all is said and done. If anything else that was broken besides the suspension, it was those local botanists' hearts. <laughs> With 19 laps to go, Marcus Erickson's car unfortunately got loose going through a corner, and the left rear hit the wall, causing his car to limp along for a few more corners, 
before accidentally getting pitting around by his own teammate Scott Dixon. Game over for the poor Swede whose Swedish ride went sourish. <laughs> Joseph Newgard was still leading at this point. Romain Grosjean of Andretti Autosport second and Alex Pillow of Chip Ganassi third. Unfortunately, with 10 laps to go, more bad luck was to come Team Ganassi's way. As Jimmy Johnson spun in exactly the same spot as Marcus Erickson, his teammate, taking out David Malikus with him, unfortunately. Leaping legends! <laughs> After that, the race went back to green, but with two laps to go, Dale Coin driver Takuma Sato crashed in the same spot as, well, Johnson and Malikus, and brought out the final caution, which the race would finish under. Joseph Newgarden would come out the leader and win the race, his first Long Beach Grand Prix win ever. Grosjean would finish second, his best Andretti Autosport finish, and Alex Pillow of Ganassi would finish third. Congratulations to Joseph Newgarden on your first Long Beach Grand Prix win, and no doubt about it, with what happened to Simon Pagino early in the race, landing in that flower bed, you can say you have a Meyer Shank entry in your new garden. <laughs> So far, with three IndyCar races run, all won by Team Penske, two of those races driven by Joseph Newgarden, it's clear as a bell that Penske is once again putting a pie in all their competitors' faces. <laughs> if you think Pagino's car ending up on the flower bed at Long Beach Grand Prix wasn't bizarre enough, more bizarre still is the fact that at this point, the Indianapolis 500 still is stuck at 32 entries, and they're still scrambling to get a 33rd and final entry to fill the field. Which means there might not even be a bump day this year. This concludes my video review of the Long Beach Grand Prix, the race at Albert Park in Melbourne, Australia for F1, and the Formula E doubleheader in Rome. Congratulations to Joseph Newgarden for winning in Long Beach. Congratulations Charles Leclerc Ferrari for winning in Australia. And while it sucks that Aston Martin did terribly in all three races so far in F1, it's good to know that their sister from Britain, Jaguar, came out on top in a dominant fashion in both races in Rome. Go British Cat! <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone! If you like my videos, please share with your friends and family and get them to like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell as well so they'll be notified of when a new video is posted. I will leave you with the results of the Formula E rounds, the IndyCar round, and the F1 race, as well as the upcoming racing schedule for this weekend. Once again, i also like to say happy birthday to Her Majesty the Queen of England, Max Chilton of Britain as well, Toby Stevens of England, a heavenly birthday to Charles Grodin, and to my little sister Amy, happy birthday to you all. See you in the next video, everybody. I'm Aaron Cylinder, firing on all cylinders.